Hi everybody, welcome to the basics of plate tectonics. There's a whole lot of reasons you might want to understand plate tectonics, but for me, a lot of it boils down to a love of geography, a love of places, and also a fascination with natural disasters and natural events. And plate tectonics is a thread that really ties all of these things together. Plate tectonics is why we have volcanoes like Mount Rainier. It's why we have huge mountain ranges like the Himalaya. And unfortunately, plate tectonics is also why we have big earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanic eruptions and things that actually threaten human health and infrastructure every day. So plate tectonics is really the root system that controls almost everything that happens on Earth's surface, at least everything geological. So in this video, we're going to give you a quick rundown on the properties of tectonic plates and the properties of their motion. Then we'll look explicitly at the types of plate boundaries, how those plates interact with each other. And then we'll finish with a little bit of a summary talking about how tectonics has actually resurfaced Earth over the last four million years. So we have a whole previous video about the basics of Earth structure, which I urge you to watch. But here's a quick recap. When we say plate, we mean a rigid body of rock called the lithosphere that includes both the crust and the lithospheric mantle. That's the upper part of the mantle. And together, those things behave as a single mechanically rigid tectonic plate, which is essentially floating in the ductile asthenospheric mantle. So the crust and the lithospheric mantle combine to make the lithosphere, which is floating in the mantle. So this is a tectonic plate right here. And these things are moving. And we know they're moving for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons we've known for a long time, as soon as we were able to date rocks, people started dating the Hawaiian Islands and confirmed that, in fact, the older Hawaiian Islands are off here to the northwest. And of course, the younger one is here on the Big Island, where volcanoes are still erupting. And the reason the islands are strung out in this linear chain like this is because the Pacific Plate is literally moving off to the northwest. And it's passing over this fixed mantle plume, or hotspot. So essentially, this plume is not moving relative to the interior of Earth. And it's the lithospheric plate that's moving over it. So that's just a, a direct piece of evidence that plates are actually moving. Of course, nowadays, we measure that with GPS also. And we'll talk more about that later in the class. So Earth is made up of 12 unique tectonic plates. And they're all moving, but they're not moving in unison. We can't view this as kind of a candy shell rotating around an M&M center. Instead, it's actually a bunch of fragments of shell that are all moving in different directions. Another way to think of this is as a jigsaw puzzle, where we're trying to move all the pieces of this spherical jigsaw past each other at the same time. So you can imagine that doesn't work well. It's not a smooth process. And more importantly, the size of the Earth is fixed. We can't make it bigger. We can't make it smaller. So if we want to move these jigsaw pieces, we essentially are required to create new material and destroy old material if we want to be able to move these plates around on this sphere of fixed size. And there's a lot of evidence that that's what happens, that plates are destroyed and created by tectonics. One piece of direct evidence we've known for a long time is from ocean bathymetry, literally the elevation of the seafloor. We know that oceanic lithosphere is created at what are called mid-ocean spreading ridges, which are literally 10,000 foot high mountain chains that run down the center of our ocean basins. We'll talk about those in a second. And we know that, that lithosphere tectonic plates are destroyed at oceanic trenches, deep, again, 10,000 foot deep trenches like the Mariana Trench, um, where these plates are diving down back into the mantle. 
So, so literally the shape of Earth's surface, some of our, our most important physiographic features are direct evidence for plate tectonics. Now, as I mentioned, in addition to destroying and creating new plates, we also have to move these plates past each other from time to time. And because the interior of these plates are quite rigid, they're very strong, um, we get most of the rubbing and bumping along the edges of the plates or at the plate boundaries. And that, that, that movement along the boundaries is accommodated by what are called faults or breaks in the Earth's crust. And we can think of three types of faults that will be important going forward. One is a strike-slip fault where two plates move laterally past each other. Another is a thrust fault, where one plate is ramped up over another plate. And another one would be a normal fault, where one plate or block of crust is actually dropped down relative to the other. So the thrust fault accommodates compression, and the normal fault accommodates extension. Although I've talked about these in terms of plate boundaries, it's important to recognize these can also happen within plates as well, and they, they commonly do. But in any event, it's these faults that allow plates to move past each other or allow plates to break. So if we look at a map of global earthquakes, this is another piece of direct evidence that rigid plates are moving past each other. Um, what do we see here? We see a band of shallow earthquakes coming right down a mid-ocean spreading ridge. We see strips of deeper earthquakes associated with subduction zones. And then we'll learn later that some of these shallow earthquakes are also associated with strike-slip uh, boundaries. But most importantly, these earthquakes literally delineate the edges of the plates. Here's the African plate. Here's the South American plate uh, and the Eurasian plate, all bounded by these earthquakes on their edges. All right, so now let's take a formal look at the types of plate boundaries. These are going to be divergent, convergent, and transform. So these three types of plate boundaries. And what we can do is we can divide those into oceanic and continental variations. So for example, a divergent plate boundary where plates are moving apart could either be a mid-ocean spreading ridge or a continental rift. And here's examples of two of those. Likewise, a convergent boundary could either be a subduction zone where one plate is diving beneath another, or it could be a collisional zone where perhaps two continental plates are colliding together. And finally, transform boundaries are where plates are moving laterally past one another. And that could either be happening at an ocean transform which we'll look at in a minute, or at a strike-slip fault. So let's have a closer look at each of these. So here's a type of divergent boundary. It's a mid-ocean spreading ridge. This is where new oceanic lithosphere is created. And the way that works is that tectonic forces cause the two sides, cause oceanic lithosphere on either side to pull apart. and magma is injected upward and cooled into new basalt rock. So that new basalt rock fills the space that is opening up as the two plates move away from each other on either side of the mid-ocean ridge. And it's called a ridge, or, or it's physiographically expressed as a ridge, because we have a warm, buoyant mantle rock that's coming up and actually causing some buoyancy, like a hot air balloon, swelling the lithosphere up into a ridge shape. A good example of a spreading ridge is the island of Iceland. It's actually located here right along the mid-Atlantic ridge line. It's one of the few places in the world where a spreading ridge, an oceanic spreading ridge, actually pokes up above the surface of the ocean. And so as a result, we can see some of the processes firsthand big basalt flows, large volumes of fresh crust, and also extensional faulting as the two sides of Iceland pull apart away from each other 
we get normal faulting or extensional faulting. So the other type of divergent boundary is a continental rift. And a good example of that is the East African rift, where the thick, old continental crust of Africa is literally being stretched and broken um, by extensional faulting. And eventually, if this process continues, this may develop into a mid-ocean ridge. But right now, it's happening within continental lithosphere, which means we call it a continental rift. So a major type of convergent boundary is a subduction zone, which we mentioned. And here's a zoom of that. The old oceanic lithosphere is quite dense. And so it's sinking into the mantle often beneath a continent, but not always. This, of course, generates earthquakes as these two plates slide past each other on what is effectively a thrust fault. And it also causes melting. As water is driven off of the downgoing plate, it causes the overlying rocks to melt. And, we, and, and that magma makes its way up, fueling volcanoes. Uh, of which we see many around the rim of the Pacific Ocean. For example, the Cascadia subduction zone in the northeastern US is a famous volcanic arc above a subduction zone. So uh, here is Seattle area, Washington, and Vancouver, Canada area. Um, here is the downgoing Juan de Fuca plate being subducted beneath North America. And you can see that due to melting above that plate, we're getting magma coming up and fueling all these famous volcanoes, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, and so on. And of course, we get a lot of earthquakes in this area. People are very worried, in particular, about big earthquakes along the subduction zone off the coast of Seattle and Oregon. So another type of convergent boundary is a continent-continent collision. So this occurs when we essentially take, when essentially a piece of continental lithosphere arrives at a subduction zone and slams into a continent on the other side. So rather than just going down the subduction zone, like oceanic lithosphere might, when a, when a thicker, more buoyant continent arrives, it collides, and all hell breaks loose. Um, we get thrust faulting, thickening, underplating. Basically, the crust deforms just like a car accident, and we start to build large mountain ranges, um, such as the Himalaya, which of course were built when India collided northward with Eurasia. And now we have this huge 3,000-mile long belt of mountains, almost as big as the United States. All right, so our final category of plate boundary is a transform boundary. And again, we have two types of these. One is just called an oceanic transform. This is a type of lateral fault where the, the, the crust is moving laterally past another block of crust. And we find these linking spreading ridges. So you could see these spreading ridges have become offset. This one's moving this way. This side is moving this way. And so we get what's called a transform boundary uh, between those two offset segments of mid-ocean ridge. We essentially have a strike-slip fault here. Now, if we have a similar lateral motion on land, we would always refer to it as a strike-slip fault. And that's a, a blanket name for plates moving laterally past each other in any situation where they're not offsetting a spreading ridge, basically. So transform, oceanic transform refers only to when they're offsetting a spreading ridge. Strike-slip fault is really a more general term for a transform boundary. A couple examples of those, again using the western US, um, there's a spreading ridge, the Juan de Fuca Ridge, sitting off the coast of Washington and Oregon. And it is offset by several fracture zones, including the Blanco fracture zone. So this is a transform boundary uh, between these two mid-ocean ridge segments. 
A good example of a strike slip fault, of course, is the San Andreas down here running north to south through California. And it's the boundary between the Pacific plate and the North American plate, where these two plates are moving roughly laterally past each other. And so we get a lot of interesting surface expression where we're not building mountains. We literally just have a gash, um, which marks the boundary between Pacific on this side and North America on this side. All right, so let's wrap this up a little bit, looking and step back out and look at the big picture. So to summarize, Earth is divided into 12 major tectonic plates. Here they are, I won't name them all. And they behave in rigid manner. And we get a lot of faulting and earthquakes along the plate boundaries, where the motion is being accommodated. And you can see that in many cases, these orange arrows indicate mid-ocean spreading ridges where two plates are moving apart and new materials being created. Um, here, these blue arrows indicate subduction zones. In this case, the Pacific plate is going down beneath the, the Australian plate. And then we have green arrows that indicate uh, strike slip or transform boundaries between the plates where there's lateral motion between the plates. So effectively, the jigsaw puzzle is being reshuffled all the time as these plates change shape and size. This is generally happening slowly, but not that slowly. For example, you might notice the maximum spreading rate is actually 17 centimeters per year. That's pretty fast. That's a meter every six years. So literally, if you are standing on the Pacific plate, underwater, of course, you'd be moving away from a point on the Nazca plate one meter every six years. That's pretty fast, certainly fast enough to notice. And I'll just close by saying the net result of all this is that Earth is constantly being resurfaced by tectonics. As these jigsaw pieces change shape um, by subduction and, and spreading, Effectively, oceanic lithosphere is destroyed. It gets sucked down subduction zones. And so what we see is that the oldest oceanic lithosphere on Earth is about 200 million years old. Um, for example, some of this stuff right here along the edge of the eastern US. Everything older than that has already been subducted back into the mantle. So we're literally resurfacing Earth on the time scale of 100 million years. That's a long time. But if you consider Earth is 4 billion years old, that means, that means Earth has been resurfaced many, many, many times uh, since it was formed. And I'll just close by comparing that with Mars. Mars had a little bit of tectonics in its early history, enough to generate some volcanoes and some lava flows. But essentially, tectonics stalled and died on Mars billions of years ago. It's not being resurfaced. It's a dead planet. And we know that because it's covered in craters. Over those billions of years, it's been pockmarked by craters. And because nothing's being subducted and destroyed and nothing new is being created, those, those craters just accumulate like welts or scars. Um, and the landscape is very, very different than the landscape of, of Earth, much more stagnant. So in summary, we've introduced some basic ideas about what tectonic or lithospheric plates are, a little bit about how they move, and what types of boundaries they can have with each other. Hopefully, if you review this video, you should be able to answer these two questions. Explain at least two pieces of direct evidence for motion of tectonic plates, and also, where is oceanic lithosphere created and where is it destroyed? Thanks, everybody.